Welcome to the Compliance 911 Show, a no-nonsense podcast discussing hot topics for today's busy compliance professional. It's everything you wanted to know about regulatory compliance, but we're afraid to ask. And now, here are your hosts, Dean Stockford of m M&M Consulting and Len Suzio of Geodata Vision. Dean, we have received, covered a myriad of regulatory cop topics over the last couple of years. What do you have on tap for us today? Hi, Len. It's great to see you. Today, I'm going to talk about a topic we've been following for a little while. It's called overdraft programs and junk fees. And while I recently talked about UDAP, uh, unfair, deceptive, and abusive acts and practices in the context of fair lending, this is another hot area that I think is uh, going to be of interest to our audience. Junk fees? It sounds like an interesting topic. Is that a regulatory definition of junk fees? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. It is. And it is an interesting topic. Yeah, we've, we've seen certainly uh, stepped up enforcement with overdraft programs overall, as far as representment and all kinds of other types of uh, issues and disclosure and so, not, and, and so on and so forth. Um, and so, uh, you know, this is this is timely. And on, in October of uh, uh, of this year, the CFPB detailed actually two distinct surprise, what they call, quote, surprise fees that they consider violations um, of the Consumer Protection Act, which prohibits UDAP or unfair practices when consumers cannot reasonably avoid them. Um, So, again, we keep hearing more and more and more about UDAP, and I've always said this is kind of that broad brush regulation that they're going to paint across every area. Um, We've cautioned about it over the last few years, about overdraft privilege and what we call courtesy programs and how regulators were applying the unfairness standard under UDAP. But most of my concerns fell more under uh, deceptive uh, uh, principles stemming from disclosure and establishing caps on the program, you know, example of that. And, and this still troubles me to this day, but I, I had a formal, uh, uh elderly tenant, um, and she made a, a $12 error in a checking account that created an overdraft. And by the time, uh, she actually brought it to my attention, uh, for further discussion, uh, the fees were in, you know, over $2,000, which is, uh, you know, just extreme, especially when you're talking about elder abuse. And it certainly looks like elder abuse when you start generate for a $12 error in a checking account. Um, instead of sitting down with the uh, with the customer, the bank continued to charge and continue to pay in the tune of 2000. So this is unacceptable on any level. And institutions need to tighten controls to ensure these types of reoccurrences are capped and do not occur. Wow. <laughs> A two thousand dollars in fees because of a twelve dollar error. That sounds unbelievable, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> yeah, so you can see what I mean. I mean, yeah, it is. It, it and I, I won't. I won't go into uh, to great detail uh, uh, as far as my discussion with the bank. But as you know, my background uh, it, it was uh, it was pretty enlightening, to say the least. I had to. I had to actually move beyond the branch manager. Um, um, and, 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 and push back significantly, actually get to senior management so that they could, uh, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll say waive or refund the fees and then square the account. I mean, with just a minor era, uh, which again, uh, this person's elderly, uh, and, and, and certainly, you know, errors occur. Um, but instead of catching it, talking to them, correcting it, moving forward, they just kept applying the fees and it's happening more and more. Um, and more than what you may think. Wow. So this is a good example of quote, what you call junk fees that the regulators are talking about. Yeah, to some extent. Yes. Um, as I just described, you know, one fee that pertains to courtesy privilege programs, but there are essentially two fees the regulators are talking about, um, under what we call the quote, surprise depository fees and surprise quote, overdraft fees. Uh, the de- the surprise depository fee is charged uh, is a fee that's charged uh, for the return to the depositor of the deposit the credit deemed non sufficient funds. 
um, and that item can be returned. They pay it, they charge. Then all of a sudden they represent it again. Boom. Same thing. Uh, the surprise overdraft fee, which is a debit card item, is approved when the account is positive, but the customer is charged a fee when the item posts negative or settles when negative, also referred to as the approved, authorized, positive, post, negative. Um, and what happens, like I said, is that same item has been presented, had been charged, represented, charged again. Uh, disclosures obviously don't include all the appropriate information relative to those multiple charges. And we just have to be careful of these types of fees. So have any of the regulators stepped up enforcement of this or issued any kind of guidance regarding these so-called junk fees? Great question. And the answer is unequivocally yes. They are, they certainly have. They're making, I'll call it a lot of noise. Um, and we have seen some, uh, some restitution that's actually had to be paid as a result of some of the enforcement. But just two days mm -hmm. before... The CFPB released the guidance uh, October 24th, 2020, 2022, excuse me. Uh, the FDIC informed its state regulators that it is focused on certain practices associated with courtesy overdraft programs. Um, that focus does include junk fees as well as additional situation not mentioned in the CFPB release where multiple return fees, as I've indicated before, may be assessed for multiple representments of the same item. So you can see the enforcement has been stepped up. Okay. So what should financial institutions do and what do they need to know about this, this very uh, touchy issue? Well, first and foremost, probably read the guidance. That would be, uh, I, you know, that's always uh, helpful when you've, uh, we certainly have read the guidance from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and other agencies that have listed any, uh, issued any, excuse me. But I think uh, financial institutions should strongly consider the prompt termination of such fees. Uh, this is the easiest approach, obviously, with risk management, weighing the risk of non-compliance with consideration given to any possible extenuating circumstances that the financial institution may put up as a defense. In addition, uh, institutions need to review disclosures and actual practices. So while your disclosure may say one thing, how do you carry it out uh, in, in your everyday practices and making sure that those are consistent in how we uh, in our application? Uh, core systems uh, have also had uh, limitations. So it's not, a, not as easy as setting parameters within core to prevent these fees. If the core is unable to prevent it by setting rules or parameters, then the financial institution should ensure that the manual internal uh, processes and controls are implemented to identify such representment fees with reversal of such fees immediately. So, Dean, this is great information. Uh, I think our listeners will find a uh, big help to them. I want to thank you for calling this uh, topic to the attention of our listeners today and for breaking it down uh, and to our listeners, I want to say we hope you enjoyed today's podcast and learned something of value. This is Len Suzio from Geodata Vision. And this is Dean Stockford from m and Consulting saying thank you for listening to today's topic on overdraft and junk fees. And to please let us know of any topics you'd like to hear in the future. Thanks for listening to the Compliance 911 Show. If you like the podcast, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, please give us a like and review to help others find the show. As always, links are in the show notes, and you can always find us online at compliance911show.com. Follow m and Consulting and Geodata Vision on LinkedIn for all the latest news and information on compliance hot topics.